I guess it's so ridiculous. It's a perfect one to explain what UX is and what is UI. Imagine you as a user, you're hungry. So in that case, if you use that interface with less features, with less, you know, features like soup, then this is probably gonna be bad UX for you as a result. And if you are hungry and you have all those other features which support you accomplishing your goal of eating, then it's probably gonna be a good UX. How often do you scroll through your social media feed like LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook and you see this design meme? Those images where people try to explain apples and oranges and what means what and especially when it comes to UX and UI. Start to grind your gears at some point because you look at it and you say, hmm, I get where you're coming from, but it's also very inaccurate. And so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to tell you what UI is and what UX is, and I'm going to use exactly the same design memes to explain it. Let's start with this one, which is basically the debate of the ketchup bottle and what is what. As you can see in this example, UI is this typical Heinz tomato ketchup, which you cannot get anything out of. And UX bottle is this, you know, conveniently ergonomically shaped quote unquote interface to interact with. It's a bit ridiculous because both of them are UIs, you see? I mean, ultimately both of them are interfaces. It's an example of how a finished product would look like. It's like you're floating mockups in the portfolios, which you see and you're like, oh, okay, it's an app, but I'm not a user or I haven't interacted or there is no experience point because experience happens when the user interacts with that product. And you could argue, yes, this is probably much better UX and bad UX, simple as that. And then that is becomes redundant. Boom, solved. And of course, the UIs are different here. And you could argue that one is then ideally is a good UI, one is a bad UI or worse UI. But you could also argue that one is glass, one is plastic, which one is a better one. And of course, it depends on the project where you're at and when you can figure out. But you get the drill. Both are just UIs which produce good or bad UX. And now the next one is really what started all for me because it was this comparison of, you see the user basically, or a person just walking through and cutting corner because the intended path was done like this. And to me, immediately the signals that there was no research done or we didn't anticipate where the people are actually walking. And it seems like this path was very longer than this pavement, meaning that if they would have maybe researched or anticipated or just observed, captured enough data where the actual people walk, and not to say that they need to now pave this like so, they could just maybe skip a part somewhere here and then pave it all together so it fits what users are trying to accomplish from goals perspective, and so we don't have to change their behaviors. And on that note, it's not really really user experience here. All it is is just user behavior. And if this is a user behavior and all of it is really an experience for whoever you talk to, what is this? Really just a UI without no research because that's what it all is. Someone just thought that it's a good idea and they brutally just went in and did it. You could argue that this is user testing it out for you and telling you, hey, your assumptions from that product design perspective are not right. That would be much more rightful. And now this next one, I don't even know where to start with this one. <laughs> so this is like the most confusing, probably one I ever seen, to be honest. But I agree that this is a user interface because you could presume that everyone interfaces with that and interacts with it. So look, this is your user interface 1.0, 2.0. This is just more features added to the same interface. I guess it's so ridiculous. That it's a perfect one to explain what UX is and what is UI. Imagine you as a user, you're hungry. So in that case, if you use that interface with less features, with less, you know, features like soup, then this is probably gonna be bad UX for you as a result. And if you are hungry and you have all those other features which support you accomplishing your goal of eating, 
then it's probably gonna be a good UX. I think this is pretty damn, you know, set up for us to explain it. And now the next design meme I just encountered by pure accident. They're saying basically that, hey, UI is this polished outlook, like glossy, you know, skin layer, which sort of agree, I guess, to an extent. And then UX is basically a wireframe, a plan for us, a blueprint, which is also, I guess, on some metaphorical level, which is sort of correct. In reality, all of this is UI. Even the wireframe is just a sketch for the UI. The UX is gonna happen when the user is gonna put the shoe on and then you can see if it works or not, if it's comfortable, if it's pleasant, if let's say your users are a runner and they wanna do a marathon, the time is gonna tell if it's actually good enough for them to achieve that goal and then you can user test and find it out and maybe make changes to it. The point here is that there is no UX right now at this point just looking at it. There is zero UX, there is no research, there is no deep understanding, no systems thinking, information architecture, or maybe you could argue there a little bit sort of hinting at it, but there is zero UX so far. There is a lot of versions of this floating all around. And I think to an extent, this is probably one of the better ones because there is a story to it. One thing, what definitely not the case here is this UI and the users. Both of them are representing the same UI, but two different types of users. This is your user one, which is basically a parent, your user two, which is a kid who receives that read-only output from the actual product. The parents are having a good UX because they seem to be happy. And the kid is probably having a bad time because he's confused and he sees this, you know, underside. But ultimately you get the drill and what is what. It's just one UI, two users, one is good, one is bad UX, simple as that. The difference between UX and UI is very simple. I mean, it's so easy to explain, especially if of other means. This one is trying to kind of like just build up the store with as many variables as possible to kind of like ingrain it. None of this is UX. Like this is not UX design. Like this is just an interface. This is just an interface. This is just an interface. You could argue that maybe this one interface is worse than interface number two or number three, and then maybe this is a better experience and a worse experience, or maybe you could say that uh, because of user research, that UX basically improves over time. So this is maybe high, this is low, and it kind of gradually progresses because your users, let's say, need those extra features and stuff like that. But ultimately, it's just trying so hard where it misses a point and I think confuses a lot of juniors who are just getting into design, which pisses me off. And now let's finish with a memes and let me just sort of serious note explain what UX is and what UI is. So this is the UX process, you know, the double diamond everybody knows. We take something we don't know and, and could be and find something which is do know and should be. And we go through divergent, convergent thinking efforts and activities and we discover, we define, we develop, we deliver. It's as simple as that. There's a lot of different complex and simple tasks to be done for the user researcher or UX designer. If you pause and take a look exactly where does UI design comes in or the process of UI designing comes in, you're gonna notice that UI design really is gonna come in in that second part of the UX process. And arguably, you know, it depends what that UI could be. Could be a printout, could be a lot of different things which you discover in that first part, in that first diamond. And let's say as you ideate, I guess I'm just gonna simply put it somewhere here. This is really where your UI work is gonna be held in this part. And I would even probably trim it down a little bit because you need to ideate on different, you know, feature sets before you start UIing it. Maybe you could argue that it starts here as well, but it doesn't really matter. Ultimately, UI happens here and then UX process happens throughout. Simple as that. One of those quote unquote memes, this is actually a good infographic because it's super simple. That's how they should be and they should be rightful. And this really is trying to explain what fits where. There's UX and UI. Of course, it could be two different skill sets, could be two different roles. One definitely contains the other. If let's say you're a UX generalist, you should be able to also do some UI, but it's not your forte. And I guess the bigger the UI, the more creative, the more visual it is, the more interactive, the more inter 
interfacey, for lack of a better term. You of course have customer experience as well, which is another layer, which basically marries the marketing aspects of the actual experience design. And then you could argue that that onion could even scale further if you would want to. I hope this video is useful. It's a bit different. If you like it, give a like, subscribe to the channel, check other videos. I'm gonna post them around. And on that note, I'll see you next time.